Hey, hi, all. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Hara. I'm our technical director of uh, aerospace and defense here at Entopology. And I'm here to talk to you today about how you can use Entopology in our next generation design tool um, <coughs> with uh, ANSYS products to kind of help simulate your design and get a better understanding of um, things you can do with your geometry. <coughs> so uh, earlier this week, one of my colleagues, Mikey of Lujinos, showed you uh, this part here. And this part is basically a heat sink with a variable gyroid lattice. And the idea is that um, through a series of inputs here in our NTOP file, we were able to generate a heat sink with an in, uh, incredibly high surface area uh, for this part. And the question was, could we take this heat sink and simulate some flow over that part? And um, ultimately, uh, we'll see how we can actually quite quickly change some parameters inside of the NTOP file and vary the um, output of that. And you can see how, in this case, I've changed the radial pattern, the number of radial patterns around this part, and then we can quite easily um, generate uh, that part. And so um, with that said, um, I'm just going to uh, pull something out here to make this run a little bit faster. But the idea is here is that we can change those parameters and we want to be able to generate those design uh, and, and evaluate those design pieces. So one trick that we've added uh, in this uh, scenario is that we um, have actually, um, we have this final part and we've actually generate a fluid flow region around this part. Specifically, we've kind of generated the negative of this part and you'll see that here, um, right here. And so what we've done is we've taken this volume around this part. And then what we've done is we've then meshed that part. Uh, and we mesh that here in this block here. And this is going to run quickly in the background. And with that mesh, we can actually export um, uh, this geometry for analysis in other tools. And this is just a simple STL um, file or mesh uh, of that part. And if we zoom in here, you can kind of see um, the STL. And it looks quite good. Uh, we have the uh, um, dense STL mesh where we need it in this high curvature areas, and we have a low density mesh elsewhere. And so by simply um, just right clicking and exporting this object, I've already done this and don't need to do it, um, we, can, we can evaluate our part. And specifically, we're going to focus on uh, using um, a part, a little sneak preview of something to come here. In the, um, what we can do is we can actually just go into ANSYS Discovery Live. And what we can do is we can actually open this geometry. In this case, instead of an STL, I actually saved it as an OBJ. It's another um, polygon format for representing geometry. We're going to bring this into ANSYS Discovery Live. And actually, I'm going to bring in, let's see, maybe I do need to export this after all. So. Uh, Let's export this here, and we're going to call this gyro heat sink, and we're going to call this fluid. Okay. So we'll actually file. I'm just going to go file open. Yep. And now we're just going to open that fluid file. No. So while it's reading this data in, ANSYS Discovery Live basically uses, uh, it's going to take our STL mesh and it's going to voxelize that. And it's going to use a GPU-based uh, fluid solver to analyze our part. And so you can see we've uh, brought our geometry into ANSYS Discovery Live. And we have that high resolution mesh here in this new part. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a new solution. In this case, um, we're going to choose uh, air. And we are not going to need to create a fluid volume. We've actually already done that. So we're going to uncheck that box. Hit create. It's going to think for a second here in the background. And while this is doing, what we're going to do is we're going to apply boundary conditions uh, on the top and bottom of this part. And we're going to uh, put some different flow parameters in there. And so now that we're here, uh, Discovery Live has a great tool for selecting um, faceted geometry. I can just double click on this face. And then right here, I can add a new flow velocity. And I'm going to add five meters per second. Just kind of guessing here on what's appropriate. I'm just going to apply that boundary condition. OK. 
Okay. And then with that said, we actually need to set, um, we're going to set some negative pressures uh, on these faces. So I'm just using control and double click here. And then now I'm going to add a new outlet pressure of zero megapascals. And while it's applying those boundary conditions, um, you can see we're all, it's going to take just a second here thinking a little bit. Um, but now we have flow coming in from the top of this part and it's going to be exiting on all these faces. So much like a, if we had this heat sink um, from NTOP and um, <clears throat> much like if we had this heat sink from NTOP, uh, let's see back here. Right, so flow is actually going to be coming down through this part, right, and then exiting out all of these faces, right? And those are the boundary conditions we're playing. And this would be much like if we had a fan that was sitting above this part, right? Much like you would see in a, um, like a, a circuit board or a motherboard inside of a computer, right? So we're adding some forced convection over this part and we're gonna uh, analyze that flow, okay? So looks like everything's ready to run here. So ANSYS Discovery Live. So normally setting up simulation in CFD would be uh, incredibly difficult. We'd have to converge and there'd be a bunch of meshing. Um, ANSYS Discovery Live makes this incredibly fast and easy. And now you can kind of see how quickly we can analyze the flow over this part. Um, very impressive that uh, Discovery Live is able to do this. And so now one of the biggest things that we wanted to do is take this advanced geometry that you can tie uh, or, or you can generate in NTOP and really through the simple export of STL, bring that into Discovery Live and um, minus our demo here. And start, it took us about five minutes to do that um, if I had, um, and even less than that if I hadn't given any background. And so what's really cool, uh, you can take this part, you can actually um, do particle imagery analysis here where we look at the flow and we can see how things are going, right? Um, it's quite interesting there. Uh, one other thing that we can add, you can also do these slices. So we can overlay these two together if you want it. You can see the flow at these section. Uh, you can see the transients uh, happening here. One of the biggest ones that we can actually look at is this calculator and we can actually compute pressure drop. This is one of the biggest questions we can get uh, in regards to uh, um, <clears throat> into uh, in topology. In this case, uh, we have quite a high velocity and uh, low pressure, but you can see uh, uh, the pressure drop is actually incredibly low here. So uh, that's a question that comes up. Um, and this will come up in an example that we're going to cover in a little bit here when we think about something else. So I'm just going to remove this guy. Okay, I'm going to take a quick peek at see if there's any questions from our participants. Let's see. Okay, looks like there's no open questions. But yeah, quite quick how you can generate uh, this geometry here. And so uh, one of the things we wanted to show is that, um, uh, again, my colleague, uh, Mikey Vlahinos and I worked on an oil cooler example. And we wanted to show how we could actually take, I'm gonna cheat and show um, a PNG image, but basically this is a tube and shell heat exchanger. So the idea is that we have some sort of fuel that's passing through these tubes inside of this object and it's exiting out. And the key thing that I want you to note is that um, this would be a traditional manufacturing method, but um, in NTOP, we can actually generate a gyroid structure very similar to the heat sink that we did and fill this internal volume uh, with fuel and oil. But one of the things we wanna compare is the pressure drop. And we're just gonna note that this is 0.08 megapascal pressure drop from the inlet to the outlet, right? And so we're gonna set up the problem uh, with the gyroid and we're gonna do that live here today. So, okay, so I'm gonna just file new, new design. I'm not gonna save any, anything that we did here. It happened so fast, I can actually recreate that quite quickly. But we're gonna go open this geometry and we're gonna to go to this fuel fluid. Again, an OBJ uh, poly format of uh, our geometry that I wanted to analyze. And this was previously generated in, in topology. Right, and so you could see a similar gyroid structure and if we compare, if I were to put these side by side, oops, let me see if we can do that, side to side with our object here, 
you can see now how we've added this gyroid structure uh, inside. And then the key with this uh, gyroid structure is that it has an incredibly high surface area. We can basically double the surface area uh, compared to this traditional tube and shell heat exchanger. Right? So we'll just talk about how we can set up uh, this analysis. Again here, we're going to set the inlet side is down here. So we're gonna go to this mesh and we're actually just going to double click here. Oh, actually I apologize, jumped ahead there. We're gonna create a solution. In this case, we're actually gonna use um, JP5 because this is a fuel cold oil cooler and JP5 is an aviation uh, fuel, very similar uh, derivative of kerosene uh, often used in aircraft, right? Specifically, usually military aircraft. Okay, so now that we have that here, I'm gonna actually pick this face and I'm gonna set a boundary condition here. I'm gonna put a new, I'm, in this case, I'm gonna put a mass flow and I'm gonna put a mass flow of 0 0.45 kilograms per second. So this is, um, uh, this is a value that we use, used previously using other ANSYS products, specifically uh, ANSYS um, CFX, right? And so now we're, um, using Insys Discovery Live to do a quick uh, investigation of how this geometry performs before we're able to do a more thorough and detailed analysis in an advanced uh, CFD tool like CFX or Fluent. Okay, so we're gonna set a new outlet pressure here of zero megapascals as well. It's gonna think here for a second. And then basically, we're just gonna add one more tool. We're gonna pre-calculate the pressure drop in this case, I'm just going to do a probe between the inlet and the outlet. And then with that said, our problem is all set up to run. And so we're just going to hit play and give it here a second here to think. And you'll notice that our transient CFD solution is running in near real time. It's probably maybe two minutes of time to set up this problem and analyze this advanced geometry that was output from topology. And the cool part here, is that you can see our pressure drop <clears throat> is you know, approximately this 855 megapascals, right? And so if we pulled up our image from the tube and shell, so we're very similar in pressure drop for this fluid, right? But we're doubling the surface area. So basically there's no penalty in terms of pressure drop and fluid velocity uh, through this part, right? And again, you can kind of see the, uh, the size of these particles, you can see how they move through the object. Um, one of the interesting things that we can pick up from this is that, uh, let's see if we can show it here. If I show the isosurface, turn off the particles, uh, inverse surface. You can actually see, we kind of get a splashing of the water as it enters the object hits that and then disperses um, over the entire part. And this becomes a little bit more evident when we choose this composite flow. It's a little dark and hard to see, but you can basically see that inlet coming in and then dispersing over that part. And then that part, uh, that fluid is actually spreading over uh, much more evenly throughout uh, this part. What's unique about this part is that it was actually designed for additive manufacturing. So you'll notice there's a lot of angles, at 45 degrees, there's actually a sump uh, integrated so that uh, the fuel will actually drain out of the part. Um, quite a few uh, uh, pieces that we're able to uh, add and improve upon um, from that original tube and shell design. So we'll just go back to the um, surface view of this. Um, you can also do things like streamline. And again, see where we, we can take this object and we can actually slice right through it. So cool. Pretty short uh, discover, uh, end top live um, today. Mainly I just wanted to show how we can bridge the gap between end topologies, uh, advanced design capability and quickly and easily analyze these designs with um, more than likely existing tools uh, uh, at, a, at a company, right? ANSYS is a, and Discovery Live is available to many of our customers and uh, certainly also available to education. And so within just a matter of minutes, you can get a good quantitative assessment of how your part is gonna perform and then compare that to uh, traditional geometries. So 
Um, with that said, I'm just going to peek here again for some questions and see if there are any. It does not appear that there are. All right. Okay. Well, um, if there aren't any questions, um, I'm just going to leave it at that for today and uh, appreciate everybody's time. If you have any questions, you're more than happy. To, uh, um, please follow up and, and reach out to us uh, at endtopology.com and um, look forward to talking with you all in the future. Take care.